Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. This is Auto Line Daily for Friday, July 9th, 2010, and while we are still on vacation, today marks the end of our Car of the Century countdown. So far this week, we've learned about some of the most significant vehicles of the last 100 years, including the Porsche 911, Volkswagen Beetle, Citroën DS, and Austin Mini. And now it's time to announce the winner of the top spot. I hope you're ready to find out what the car of the 20th century was, because it's coming at you right after the break. Introducing Bridgestone's third generation of run-flat tires with groundbreaking new Bridgestone technologies. Bridgestone run-flat tires offer improved ride comfort, lower rolling resistance, and improved wear while giving you the peace of mind and comfort you need. There was a, another historian, not me, who said that the Model T was really the only revolutionary car of the 20th century. And it is because the Model T was available in enough abundance at a low enough price that enough people could buy it that it could really transform things. It could literally, to use the cliche, put the country and the world on wheels. There was only going to be one car that was going to get a chance to do that. Every other car has been a response to the revolution that the Model T wrought. The Ford Model T appears in 1908 and the car is an instant success. When it first appears it costs $850 which is not the cheapest car on the market. So its appeal definitely has to do with the attributes of the car itself, not just the price. What makes the Model T so special is its combination of low weight, good power, simplicity, and durability. At a time when roads are rarely paved and often in atrocious conditions, the T can easily cross the roughest roads and be repaired with a blacksmith's tools. Its simple engine and transmission make routine maintenance so simple that buyers don't have to worry about finding a mechanic or garage. They can pretty much do it themselves. While we often think of the T as a primitive car, it was actually quite advanced for its day. In its day, when it was first introduced, it was a very modern automobile. It doesn't look it to our modern eyes, but um, it made extensive use of vanadium steel, which was both lightweight and strong. It had a 20 horsepower engine, which in 1909 was a, a goodly amount of horsepower. That engine was all cast in one piece. It was the block was a single piece. We think that's normal today. It was unusual in 1909. It was one of the things that helped keep the cost down. It had a detachable cylinder head, which again we think is normal. Typically only expensive cars had a detachable cylinder head had a uh, planetary transmission that was actually very easy to drive so that uh, you didn't have to master the clashing gears uh, and it, it meant that a lot, of, a lot of people would be able to master the driving of the car. It was a very, very rugged machine which was good because American roads, except in the cities, American roads were really awful. Uh, it was also a relatively simple machine which was good because there weren't a lot of mechanics. It meant that people could do the repairs on their own. So it is a perfect example of a, an invention or a, a product that is uh, the right product at the right time and just as important at the right price. But it's far more than the car itself that gets the Model T the top spot in the car of the century voting. It's also recognized for the manufacturing revolution that it represents significant because it developed the manufacturing system that we still use today, the moving assembly line. So it, it's a significant in that it, it developed the process for making all cars and it was a car for every man. It was, it was something that um, an average laborer, the guy who built that car, could afford to buy and own. It put together all the attributes of a really good car um, with a low price. Initially low for its day but still at eight hundred and fifty dollars fairly expensive what happened then is Ford just relentlessly improved the manufacturing process and drove that price down year by year six fifty five fifty three fifty and, and when the Model T finally went out of production you could buy a touring car for less than three hundred dollars in 1927 so it was a really good product that met the needs of the time and then 
the price was low enough and kept getting lower that uh, eventually virtually anybody that wanted an automobile could buy one either new or used. At a time when most people rarely travel 20 miles from their home, the Model T puts mobility and freedom within the reach of the average family. Farm folk who might only go into town once a month can get there any day they want, certainly every weekend. City folk now have a new way of commuting and getting around town. We begin to see the landscape physically change due to the car, and it indirectly begins to create new opportunities and wealth for a lot of people. Henry Ford had a very interesting formula, and we don't know if it was premeditated or just happened, but through mass production, he was able to lower the price of the cars, more were sold, he made greater profits, he was able to pay his assembly line people a great deal more money than any of the competitors. He was famous for the $5 a day. $5 in a day, that's more than most people made in a week at that time. They can in turn take their higher incomes and buy cars. So it was a self-perpetuating uh, prosperity. Indeed, he, he very much contributed to creating the middle class. One of the things that the Model T did was really physically reshape our cities. From being a core cities with uh, people living very close to where they work and where they shop, the Model T and, and other automobiles allowed people to move a distance away from where they work to create the kind of bedroom suburbs that are so common now. Um, it also helped to reshape the, the, the rural landscape. It allowed farmers to travel to the city, to be able to travel around the countryside. Um, it uh, helped make vacations open up to the middle class who hadn't been able to afford to travel long distances before, now you could get in your car and you could travel and you could camp by the side of the road and save money. It gives rise to the whole roadside industries of gas, food and lodging we think of now. And eventually it gives rise to things like the enormous interstate highway system which uh, helps to bring about the decline of railroads, bring up long haul trucking. Um, it, it, literally, if you, if you want to know the effects of the Model T, uh, look around you. 19th century lifestyles start to fall by the wayside, and the Model T begins to have an important and long-lasting effect on society. As people encounter the freedom that the automobile affords them, they begin to question what they feel are old-fashioned restrictions, and they begin to rebel against the way things used to be done. It really did have an enormous effect on on dating and sexual mores because now you had this vehicle in which you could you could go off some distance uh, farther than you could in a in a buggy um, and you could get away from home you no longer had to have a, a date that was close to home or with other groups of people and it it, it tended to, to break down those family ties and allow people to get off and be alone you know I think it was John Steinbeck who said that um Heaven was the only place you couldn't get to in a Model T, but I've often pointed out that uh, a lot of my friends did uh, in the back seat, if not the front. The T is recognized for its design, its technology, the changes it brought about in manufacturing, and its impact on society. Even though the T has been out of production for nearly 75 years, it still holds a fond spot in the hearts of enthusiasts the world over. The Ford Model T is simply the car that put mankind on wheels. Uh, until the Model T came out in 1908, uh, the automobile was a rich man's plaything. They were produced in very small quantities, they were hand-built, they were very, very expensive. Uh, you know, they were like corporate jets are today. The average person just didn't have one. And then the Model T came out, it was affordable, it cost about 800 some dollars in its first year, and then went down steadily in price, and all of a sudden people could buy them, and they did, buy the millions. I hope you enjoyed this look back in time at one of the most important cars in the history of the industry. And from all of us here at AutoLine, thanks for watching. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here at our usual time next week. <laughs>